By now, if you're a Game Boy modder, you should probably know that double A's and triple A's are the best way to power your Game Boy. Yes, you can use LiPos, but sometimes those aren't implemented as safely as they could, especially when it comes to these cheap boards with the TP4056 chip. People usually push them up against the LiPo, they heat up and they have a really high charge current of 1 amp. There's also a lot of other issues like cell protection, charge and play, and of course because these circuits aren't made specifically for the Game Boy. Lithium polymer battery safety is a big thing. I used to make FPV drones and I remember once when one crashed and the battery went off in a puff of smoke. You often see vape fires and also electric car battery fires. So with the thought people are going to use LiPos anyway, I tried to make a cheaper version of the TP4056 board with better chips. So I self-appointed myself as center of the Game Boy modding community and made a list, but I checked it a million times and I came up with a safer charge DC board. Now what is safer charge and what is play and charge? Well, I always use the analogy that it's like drinking from a cup and then someone's pouring your drink in while you're drinking it. The battery gets confused, so this can lead to problems. The Safer Charge DC has an internal switch, so when you plug it in by itself, when you're just charging the Game Boy, you can see here it draws 333 milliamps. That's what I've programmed it to. But when you plug it in and play at the same time, you can see it draws 500 milliamps, which is actually the battery charging and the Game Boy being powered by the USB. So the battery doesn't get confused and it's not depleting and being charged at the same time. So on board, I have a battery protection chip, a circuit that switches from USB to battery power and quality brand name power management IC chips. So first I'm going to install it on a Game Boy Color and I'm going to be showing you how you can use the DC jack to charge it instead of adding a USB-C. You can also use AA batteries with this mod but it's a different setup, you can follow along in the guide. But if you're using AA batteries I recommend instead you get something like the Frogulator by Froggo since you won't be using half the components on the safer charge board so it just makes more sense to go with the Frogulator. To start the install, I recommend you first solder wires to the two 5V and two F1 pads. This just makes it easier because once you put it on the Game Boy board, it might be a bit hard to reach them. Next, you just need to solder the included header pins to the board and then install it where the DC board usually is on your Game Boy Color or Game Boy Pocket. Now I'm going to install the wires. First, you need to put the one before the fuse that's labeled F1. If you were using the USB-C, this is where you would remove the DC jack and install the USB-C, but I'm going to show you how to use the DC jack to charge the board. So first thing you've got to do is remove F2 and install the five volt wire where I am here, which is on the left pad. If you want to use the DC jack to charge the board, you have to use a 5 volt USB cable and the barrel jack measurements are 2.5 by 0.7 millimeters. Now when it comes to batteries, you have to source the right one for your Game Boy. For the Game Boy Color slot, you need one that's 103048. The connector type is JSTPH. The connector on the safer charge board will come unsoldered as not all connectors on batteries are wired the same. Some have 5 volt on the left, some have 5 volt on the right. So match up your battery to the connector and then solder it accordingly. If your battery has the wrong connector or just no connector at all, you can solder it on separately. Make sure to do that later when you close up the shell. So just an example here of how you would do that. You would screw the motherboard in like you would usually then you've got to thread the battery wires through the back of the shell and solder it to the board and then you can close it up. Now back to the tutorial, I soldered the battery up just to show you how everything goes and then you can see the Game Boy is on. 
and here is my DC barrel jack and if I plug it into the board the board has a charging indicator and when it turns on that means it's charging when it turns off that means it's full so we can see the red light here so we know it's charging now onto the Game Boy Pocket we are going to be using a USB-C with this one so I pre-removed the DC jack the USB-C port just needs to be installed on top of where the DC jack would be originally so I'm just going to tin the middle pad first to use it to anchor the USB-C in position then add solder to the other pads turn it around and make sure the solder goes all the way through like all USB ports this will receive a lot of force when you put the cable in and out so make sure you solder it properly and flat especially because the board connects to the ground on the Game Boy board itself Solder the 5 volt wire to the pad on the USB-C. After that you want to solder the 2 F1 wire to the top of the F1 fuse on the back side of the board. As for the USB-C cut, I usually just use a file and just file down a rectangular port. You can see here what it looks like on the pocket. And then on my Game Boy Color, I do the exact same thing. I'm going to work on a template that you can use to help cut a proper circle. But otherwise, you can just trace it yourself. And there we go. We have it installed on a Game Boy Pocket, also on a Game Boy Color, using the DC jack, not using the DC jack. On the Game Boy Pocket, with the right size battery, you should get around 5 hours battery life with medium high brightness. On the Game Boy Color, you should get around 8 hours. Don't forget to check the description for all the links and thank you for your support. Bye!